Hi, my name is Timothy Johnson, and this is my marketing analysis for Apple Inc. The specific product category that I um, worked on for my MBA project was smartphones and tablets. These two products were included because they typically run the same operating system and can run the same applications, making them somewhat interchangeable to bit, depending on the specific use. The smartphone and tablet market that um, Apple is competing in is an extremely competitive industry. Apple introduced the iPhone in 2007. This device disrupted the entire market for cell phones and essentially created the market for smartphones. Though one existed before for smartphones and tablets, they were nowhere near mainstream before Apple entered this market. Apple disrupted the market again in 2010, introducing the iPad, which essentially became the tablet. This again was a very disruptive um, force in the market, changing the way people were computing. This video will walk through an analysis of the smartphone and tablet market. And in it, you will find an overview, which I just gave you, um, a SWOT analysis, the target market that Apple is um, targeting, an industry mix of the products in the industry, and um, the product positioning and differentiation Apple uses to um, dominate this market. In um, 2012, the total smartphone market in the entire world was 712 million devices which 45% of those shipped in the fourth quarter of 2012, according to IDC. For the target market for tablets, the total market for 2012 was 122.3 million um, units. Apple was still the leading shipper in this market in the fourth quarter and shipped 22.9 million devices in the fourth quarter, according to IDC. This slide shows a, um, a good synopsis of the competition that Apple faces in the overall market. Notice that the operating system on these devices is called Android and is created by Google. And the devices that are running the, this operating system are Samsung devices. This creates a very uh, clear picture of the major competition that Apple faces in this market. Google creates the operating system that competes against iOS on Apple's products, the iPhone and iPad. Samsung makes most of the devices that compete directly with the iPhone and iPad devices. So Samsung produces most of the um, competing devices in the world and some of the problems this industry facing is most of the competition are on the operating system and because the devices are conceptually very similar but it's the iOS that makes the big difference in this market. The internal environment presents many landmines for Apple. It has opportunities in that it can continue its strategy of tying its consumers to an ever-growing ecosystem of consumable media, books, music, movies, games, and apps. On the threat side of things, it is easy to imitate these um, types of products. As we saw in the last slide, pretty much Samsung's products look like Apple products. And Apple and Samsung have done a good job of that. Though Samsung is a major competitor, other competitors such as Microsoft, HCC, Amazon, and even Google are chipping away at Apple's, Apple's armor. Another threat is the consumer market is so fast moving that it is very hard to innovate and keep up with the changing market environment. Finally, the last threat that I think is very important is the loss of Steve Jobs in 2011. Though it has only been two years, it is possible that Apple 
may have lost that innovative drive and edge in the ability to continue leading the market. The target market in segments for smartphones and tablets typically the 18 to 49 demographic, but increasingly this target market is anyone that uses cell phones. Many, many products that are outside of the smartphone and tablet categories use the app ecosystem to enhance the products such as Houston's 311 system or um, Tesla Motors, who create an app that gives you control of many features of your car. With market penetration in the U.S. of greater than 100 million smartphones, that is conceptually half of the market of phones for the entire U.S. So you could pretty much say that anyone over the age of 13 is probably a target market for iPhones, definitely in, in iPads for a lesser extent. With this 50% market penetration, the target market is anyone over the age of 13, again. And for tablets, it's more of the mobile computing market. It hasn't made a big, um, as big of splash in the market as phones have, but anyone that wants an ultra portable um, device would target the iPad because it has a bigger screen and a little bit more um, usability as far as reading and general computing, though it's still considered somewhat of a luxury. Next, I'll talk about Apple's marketing mix. Product and promotion. With the iPhone, Apple has created multiple versions of the device to appeal to different consumers in the market. The iPhone 4, the iPhone 4S, and the iPhone 5. Each of these versions have differing sizes of storage to even further differentiate them. They have a 16 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte, 64 gig gigabyte on the iPad side, it comes in a variety of flavors as well. The product features um, the iPad mini, the iPad 2, and the iPad version 4. They come in similar configuration sizes as the iPhone, all the way up to 128 gigs, and you will see that in a later slide. The promotion of the iPhone and iPad is done through advertising, traditional media, and um, also um, building an air of suspense and speculation surrounding the release of a new version. Apple is such a secretive company, it has perfected the technique to maximize the buildup of suspense that gets the media and people excited about the release of their products for days before they even release or available for sale. Pricing. With the iPhone, it has multiple versions of the device to appeal to different levels of consumers in the market. The iPhone 4, for instance, starts at $99. While you see on the slides, this is the pricing for the iPhone 5. They start out for the 16 gig at $199, all the way up to $399 with the four, uh, two year contract. The iPad comes in many flavors, many of the same flavors. As you can see, it starts at 499 for the 16 gigabyte version and goes up to 799 for the 120 gigabyte version. And it also has uh, differing levels depending on whether you want cellular data or um, not, or just complain Wi-Fi and iPad mini um, targets an even lower um, level market starting at $329, which is slightly higher than the competition, but Apple likes to keep its um, exclusive pricing because they think and believe they have better, better products. 
Apple um, products are sold in Apple owned retail stores and many big box retailers as well as Amazon on online retailers. Many of the products are um, sold at the cell phone carriers as well. For the iPad, the largest um, outlet for these products is through the Apple's retail um, outlet or retail store than Best Buy. For iPhones, the biggest distributors are the cell phone um, providers themselves. So one, of the one of the amazing reasons for using um, these distribution outlets is that Apple employees um, know in our best position to educate users about the benefits of the smartphone and tablet technologies, more so than the big box stores whose staff are not well trained on how to close the deal, per se, for customers looking at buying an Apple product over an Android product. What makes it different for the iPhone, per se, is that when you are purchasing an iPhone, you probably want to purchase a data plan. And that data plan needs to be sold through a cell cellular provider, which is usually Apple or I mean AT&T or Verizon, the biggest providers. Ideally, Apple would position its products as indispensable to our everyday lives. More and more of this is happening as people start to consume entertainment, music, calendars, email, and other products through its devices. There are many ways that Apple products are like their competitor products. They all have good screens, ability to have many computing functions, and can connect to Wi-Fi networks and the internet. Many times you think that you could almost substitute an Android Samsung phone for an iPhone. Conceptually, this is true. In terms of parity, most Android phones can do anything that an iPhone can do. But this is where we start to see subtle differences that make Apple's ecosystem more appealing to some users. Apple differentiates itself by offering many ways first to control the operating system and make it closed so that it has a better feel in consistency throughout the differing devices. If you had an iPhone and an iPad, your applications work exactly the same and you get a consistent feel. Or an Android, you may have an Android phone and an Android tablet and the same application may not work at all on those two different devices. So that's part of the way Apple likes to control the user experience. They also do this um, by controlling which applications are allowed to work on the operating system. And this gives people the belief that the, the operating system is less prone to, to viruses, which affect Android phones. One of the main differentiators of Apple products is their industrial design. They like to make their phones and um, tablets feel luxurious, feel expensive. And Apple prides itself on having the best industrial designers that design products that feel great in consumers' hands and make people think of high quality across the platform. So we've gone through an overview of the market, realized that the smartphone market is nearly Three quarters of a billion users in, in the world and the tablet market is approaching 125 million users. We discussed the threats of Apple in the environment. We looked at the targeted demographic in the U.S., which is almost 50% of the population over age 13. We talked about the marketing mix and products that were, um, Apple was offering, pricing, promotion, things like that. It'll be interesting to see what new innovations come in the future and whether Apple can, can, stay, can, can sustain its competitive edge in the absence of Steve Jobs.